alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome to this special edition of the Faith Book. We would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on this auspicious occasion of Eid al Ghadir. To you and to your family, and I know you're probably busy getting dressed, preparing yourselves for the celebrations. But here at Imam Hussein TV, myself, Mosin Shah, would like to extend our congratulations on this joyous and special and memorious and glorious occasion of Eid al Ghadir. Now, 1400 years ago or for more, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi went on his final hajj and on the way back he stopped and he congregated his followers at a place called Ghadir Khum. There he gave a special sermon where he raised the arm of Amirul Mu'minin and recited the most famous words, Whoever I am the master of, Ali is the master of. And that is Ghadir, the celebration of our faith, the celebration of the perfection and the completion of our religion with the wilayah of Amirul Mu'minin. I'd like to introduce myself, Mohsin Shah as your host, and my co-host, my guest, my teacher, Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Manju. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alana min al-mutamassikina bi wilayat Amir al-Mu'minin. As'ad Allah ayyamakum wa yakdi Allah hawa'ijakum. May Allah azza wa jal on this grand day of Eid. Fulfill all your uh, prayers and all your needs and desires together with uh, all our esteemed viewers on uh, Imam Hussein TV. And uh, most important of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of recognizing the wilaya of Amir al Mu'minin. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Sheikh, now before I begin, Eid Mubarak to you on this special and joyous occasion. Eid Mubarak occasion. to you too. Sheikh, now. Eid al Ghadir has been, um, you know, as, as, as recognized as one of the biggest Eids in the Shia calendar, uh, a very, very important day. What is the significance of Eid al Ghadir? It's a fabulous question. And uh, to be absolutely accurate and to shed light on this event, Eid al Ghadir is not only the biggest event in the Shia calendar, rather, it has been the biggest event in every religious calendar that was monotheistic by nature. MashaAllah. Yeah, I mean, it is an Eid that is not particular to the Shia. 18th of the Hijjah, which the Shias are known in this day and age to celebrate as a day of Eid, as a grand day of Eid, was actually a day of Eid and celebration commemorated by 124,000 prophets. All of them from the beginning, and we have hadith in regards to this, to understand the greatness of the Eve which we are currently in, and to appreciate the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I say to every one of the muwalin and the muhibbin, haniyan lakum for celebrating Eid al-Ghadir. Because you are celebrating an Eid that was celebrated from every Nabi, from Adam to Musa and Isa and Yunus and Yusuf and Ya'qub. Hadith is Sharif is narrated by Imam al Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh in the book Wasailu Shia and is also narrated in Tahdibul Ahkam. Where in the part of this hadith, Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam says in regards to Eid al Ghadir, wa huwa Eid Allah al Akbar. It is the greatest Eid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 18th of Dhil Hijjah, Binas al Imam al Ma'asum, is greater than Eid al Fitr, is greater than Eid al Adha. In fact, the Fitr. And the Adha has no value without Eid al Ghadir. And again, Nas from the Quran, we have in regards to this. But in any case, Imam al Sadiq salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi says, Wa huwa Eid Allah al Akbar. It is the greatest Eid of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa ma ba'atha Allah Azza wa Jal nabiyan qat. Illa wa ta'ayyada fi hadha al yawm wa arifa hurmatah. Imam Sadiq says, alayhi salam, there is not a single prophet that was sent by Allah except that 
وَتَعَيَّدَ فِي هَذَا الْيَوْمِ That he took this day, 18th of the Hijjah, to be a day of celebration, to be a day of Eid. وَعَرِفَ حُرْمَتَهُ There is a hurma, there is a divinity, there is a sanctity which is associated to this day of Ghadir. فَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ حَنِيًّا لَكُمْ And congratulations again to all our mushahideen who are participating in a celebration that was uh, a celebration in which Nabi Musa and Harun and Yoshua and Isha and each and every one of the Anbiya participated in. Alhamdulillah wa shukar. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, Shaykhna. Shaykhna, let's go through the, the event of Ghadir. Um, so we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi doing his final hajj. And then he's going back towards Medina. And, you know, he, he finds a, a strategically uh, important slash feasible location where he can congregate all the Muslims. Uh, just a couple of words, please, on, on the actual place of Ghadir. What was Ghadir? Is it a, an oasis? Is it a piece of derelict land? Is it in the desert? A strategic place in terms of the traveling route of the day. Where from this point of Ghadir al Khom, which is famously known, that all the caravans that were now dispersing throughout the entire other Muslim lands, this would be the final point of congregation. From this point onwards, they disperse to different travel routes or journey routes in order to get to their final destination. So it was a strategic location which. Allah Azza wa Jal, through, Nabi, through Angel Jibra'il, commands Rasulullah, even the place is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have nas in regards to this from the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ma yantiku anil hawa in huwa illa wahyun yuha. The Prophet does not utter anything except that it is revelation. So, when the Holy Prophet commands the companions to stop at this particular place and to call those people who have gone forward to come back and those who are left behind to hurry up until they congregate at this particular place, is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal. For the place of Ghadir Khom, its strategic position in that this was that final place where all the Muslims of the time are collected together in one point before this grand, eternal message is delivered. Understand. So the story goes that they made the pulpit, they used uh, whatever materials they had, mainly saddles uh, from you know, the, the, the animals. Um, and Rasulullah sallallahu begins to give a sermon. Roughly, how long did this sermon last? I mean... Was it really, really hot? Was it easy to be able to listen and, and concentrate on the sermon? The timing which Rasulullah again sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam selected in order to deliver this message was a very peculiar timing and a very unique timing in the sense that the heat was at its peak towards the time of noon from what we are able to understand or leading up towards noon. And so he selected a time which was extremely difficult upon the people. And within this, there is a great dalala, such that we have within the books of uh, the narrators and the historians that the heat was such that people had to cover their heads with cloths. And some of them had to put cloth underneath their feet in order to, uh, to withstand the heat of the sand. Those perhaps who are maybe not wearing the... Uh, uh, sandals any sandals or, or slippers yeah. or of that for the time far the heat was extreme and over here there's a great dalala as we were saying the prophet who is rahmatan lil alameen the same holy prophet who would hasten through the prayers of jama'ah when he heard a child cry such that his mother may catch up with the child he hastens the salatul jama'ah you can imagine this prophet of mercy, what an important message it must have been such that he congregated his companions at a time when the heat is at its peak. Of course, the heat was uh, the heat of the desert. Uh, and in addition to all that, the timing of the message just before or around the time of noon. So inshallah, we'll, we'll go through the sermon a little later on. Um, but, you know, uh, the sermon goes as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi discusses his authority over uh, the people, uh, he delivers his message, 
um, for Kuntum Mawla or for Hada Ali and Mawla, whoever I am master of, Ali is master of, um, the, the crowd uh, agree. And then the, there is a system or there is bayah given to Amir al Mu'minin. Could you explain how the bayah was given? Uh, the oath of allegiance that was granted to Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam is uh, one way from numerous ways in which we are able to establish that the intended meaning from the usage of the word Mawla was master and not friend. Because the word Mawla, linguistically speaking, can have multiple meanings. And a word that has multiple meanings, a word hypothetically that has multiple meanings, the context in which it is used. There has to be a clarification through the context or through additional sentences that clarify the meaning of that word. So, on the assumption that because this is a very famous, you could say, or widely quoted argument from the Mukhalifin, from the Amma, and uh, uh, the, uh, a very famously quoted argument that the word Mawla means friend. So we say to them, from amongst the very many proofs that we have to show you, that the word Mawla in itself does not mean friend, especially in the context in which it was used. One of the, dala one of the uh, dalil that we give them, one burhan from the many barahin that we have that we can give them is the fact that a pledge of allegiance was paid to Amir al-Mu'minin after this declaration. And you have masadir, yani you have References from the Amma as well as the Khassa that show that for three days. Wow, three days. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ensured that people paid homage to Amirul Mu'minin. Ya'ani pledged their allegiance to Amirul Mu'minin for three days. Do you pledge your allegiance to a friend for three days? Ajib wa gharib. Fa, you have texts such as what is at the top of my mind, at Tabari. You refer back to Tariq at Tabari. The first people to come and to shake the hands and shaking of the hand at the time, again in the context in which this declaration is made, symbolizes a pledge of allegiance. And this in itself is a vast topic of research which is open for anybody to conduct. And to try and prove us wrong on this claim. Ahlan wa marhaban. People, the first ones to come forward, you have the likes of Omar ibn Khattab, the likes of Abu Bakr, ibn Abi Kahafa, you have the likes of Talha, you have the likes of Zubair who come in and pledge allegiance to Amir al Mu'minin, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi, Tariq al Tabari, for three days. 100,000 plus companions under the watchful eye of Rasulullah paid homage to Amir al Mu'minin. This is the greatest or one of the greatest indications to show you that, in addition to the many kara'in that we have, in addition to the verse quoted by Rasulullah of the Holy Quran when he said to them, Alastu awla. For example, min anfusikum, in regards to the verse of the Quran that the Holy Prophet is awla to you than you are for yourself. Yani has more authority over you. And in this context, it says, Man kuntum mawla, fahada aliyun mawla. The follow-up pledge of allegiance over three days. The Prophet would not make it compulsory for three days to people to just go and shake the hand of a friend. This goes against the hikmah of a normal human being. Then what about Rasulullah, who is khatamul anbiya? Shaykh, what about um, the females? W were they present as well? And, and how would they have given bayah to Amir al -Mu'min? We have within the historical text that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam had pitched a tent. And uh, from the tent, what would happen is a curtain was also placed, a veil, where the women would put their hands in a bowl of water. Now, Amir al muminin would put the hand on the other side of the bowl. If it's a big tasht, for example, okay. the women would put their hand in the water while Amir al Mu'minin's blessed hand was on the other side and they would verbally declare their allegiance to Amir al Mu'minin. So, 
instead of the handshake for the women, it was putting the water in the bowl in which on the other side was the hand of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. Shaykhna, Ghadir is not really the first time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has expressed his love for Amir al-Mu'minin and that he is to be the successor. You know, uh, a lot of scholars, including yourself, give great importance that this is not like a declaration of that this is my successor. This is more of like, you know, passing the, the, it's like the administration of uh, Amir al-Mu'min coming into power. Ah, In the sense that Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam was an imam and was the master, not only of the mu'minin, but a master of the anbiya, with the exception of Rasulullah, even before this world was created. The imam was an imam before this universe came into existence. The imamate of Amir al-Mu'mineen as the successor of Rasulullah was declared in the event of Da'wat al Ashira. And this is something that is agreed upon again by the Amma and the Khassa. So these are facts that are mushtarak between two schools of thought. And anybody can go and research this and come up with this. Yani it's no hidden secret or uh, a groundbreaking or new research that you have come up with. Uh, discovered something that was unknown. No, something that is known. For Amir al-Mu'mineen uh, alayhi salam, his leadership was already declared. During the time from, you could say, from the first time Rasulullah invited the people towards Islam. And from his close people and warned those of your close relatives or your kin. And uh, Amir al muminin Rasulullah says, which one of you accepts my message to paraphrase and embraces my message and will therefore be my successor? Nobody stands up except Amir al muminin alayhi salam when he is... A lad at that time of not more than the age of 12, 13, as they say. And hence, it was from the very first messages of Rasulullah that this Khilafah is the Khilafah of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. So therefore, Eid al-Ghadir, the message that Ali is, Ali, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salam, who Ali is your master, is not the first time that it was granted, but the official ceremony to execute the bay'ah, the pledge of allegiance and this covenant as the successor of the Holy Prophet upon whom his command and his leadership is wajib for everyone to follow. This ceremony is what we mark as Eid al-Ghadir. Oh, I remember from, from my uh, studies as well that uh, there was a time of the, the Battle of Tabuk where uh, Imam Ali was, uh, wasn't taken to the battle and a lot of people were saying that oh Rasulullah is upset with him, this is why he hasn't taken you and when, you know, when Rasulullah you know, found out about this and he spoke to Imam Ali and, and told him that no, you, know, you are to me as Harun is to Moses except there is no prophet after me this was another indication of the relationship and also you know, uh, the status of that Imam Ali being the, the Khalif after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Moving on Shaykh now to the actual sermon of Ghadir now uh, I've heard it's a very, very long sermon. Marshall, I've read some books on it. And then, then I wanted to ask you, what is the theme and what, what, what's, what, what is the ceremony trying, not ceremony, sorry, what is the um, khutbah trying to underline? The historians mention the khutbah of Rasulullah as being an all-encompassing sermon where the Holy Prophet speaks about or summarizes the entire deen and the efforts of these 23 years of tabligh in regards to this religion, starting from its fundamental tenets and going into its furu'ah. For in addition to it being a summary of the entire deen, you find that the person who studies this khutbah of Ghadir, and it is a khutbah which almost, you can say, is obligatory upon every Follower of Rasulullah. I didn't say follower of Amir al Mu'mineen. Every follower of Rasulullah to try and study and to try and read. And there are many indications in regards to this. You find that what I came across close to 38 times within this khutbah, 
within this sermon that lasts for at least an hour, if not more, 38 times, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam makes a reference to the superiority of Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi. 38 times in one sermon. And Rasulullah is a role model for us. لَكَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةً حَسَنَا Indeed, within Rasulullah, there is the perfect role model for you. And I say this to myself humbly, to all the people who attend the majalis. And I say this to all the people within the Husayniyat, within the different centers, within the different mosques, who are responsible for arranging majalis. Learn from Rasulullah the ihtiram and the need for having the majalis that are filled with the fadail of Mawlana Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. In one sermon, one sermon, Amir al Mu'minin mentions Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam 38 times. And now we come and we see Ajib wa Gharib, the day and age in which we live. If a khatib was to mention the fada'il of Amir al muminin more than five times within one lecture, people have alf ishkal on him. Thousand and one ishkal. They say, majalis wahwa. You know, the, the way they mock the fada'il of Amir al muminin People who, who are in charge of organizing the recites or organizing the majalis, and they come and tell the khatib, do not overemphasize on the fada'il. The one who listens to the fada'il, they come and they say, oh no, we didn't learn anything from a majlis fada'il. <laughs> Baba, learn from Rasulullah. Find me. One majlis, even the khutaba, where in one majlis you have 38 fada'il of Amir al-Mu'mineen that are mentioned. But you find that Rasulullah mentions Amir al-Mu'mineen 38 times within this khutbah. Fada'il of Amir al-Mu'mineen from the Quran, in regards to the status of Amir al Mu'minin, the divinity of Amir al Mu'minin, the courage of Amir al Mu'minin, the authority of Amir al Mu'minin, the implications of abandoning the wilaya of Amir al Mu'minin, these are all things that are outlined within the khutbah of Rasulullah. I would say for the brothers and sisters, do we have time or are we going on a We've short break? No. We have got plenty of time for the Fada'il of Amir al-Mu'mineen, alhamdulillah. Ahsantum, time for the Fada'il of Amir al-Mu'mineen. You find that if you were to refer back to Kitabul Ihtijaj, you find that the entire khutbah of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in the regards to Yawmul Ghadir can be found in Kitabul Ihtijaj uh, in the first volume. And it is also interesting to note that uh, the khutbah over here in regards to the manner in which Rasulullah speaks about the grave consequences of abandoning the wilayah of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And from here we understand that the role of the successor of Rasulullah is to ensure that this religion is not corrupted upon the martyrdom of Rasulullah. As we were saying, you look at some of the mannerism in which Rasulullah speaks about the status of Amir al-Mu'mineen. In one part of the khutbah, you see, from the entire khutbah, you'll find that majority of us know one sentence. Man kuntum mawla, fahada aliyyun mawla. Famous and the most Ahsan. we uttered sentence every, and it's, every gadeen we had this Ya barakallah beek, and alhamdulillah, it has to continue. Huh? Because if people stop saying, on your mulgadir man kuntu mawla fahada aliyu mawla. This is the first step towards trying to reduce the dhikr of Amir al-Mu'mineen yes. altogether. This is very good. It has to continue and all our children have to know even if they have a limited vocabulary or they can't speak, at least they know how to say man kuntu mawla fahada aliyu mawla. Yes. That has to continue. Bila shakin wala raib. In addition to this, we have to look at this khutbah of Rasulullah. What else did Rasulullah say? Yomul Ghadir. 
the problems that we have within the Shia community in regards to the wilaya of Amir al muminin and the fada'il of Ahlul Bayt taking a qasam billah on a night as grand as Eid al Ghadir. Majority of our issues within the Shia community in regards to Aqidah would be solved. Disputes would be resolved. There wouldn't be ideological turmoil and ideological fractions or fragmentation of the community if people abided by the words of Rasulullah within this khutbatul ghadir. Please, please give us a sample. Rasulullah says, Ma'ashira nas innahu imamun min Allah. O people, innahu, indeed he, yani Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, imamun min Allah is an imam appointed by Allah azza wa jal. So, first of all, this historical debate in which years and years blood has been shed. Can an imam be appointed by the people or is an imam appointed by Allah? Rasulullah in one sentence makes it clear. Innahu imamun min Allah. A leader and imam appointed by Allah. Allahu Akbar. Walan yatub Allah ala ahadin. أَنْكَرَ وِلَايَتَهُ وَلَنْ يَغْفِرْ لَهُ Hajib. Rasulullah says, and Allah Azza wa Jal shall never accept the repentance of a person who negates and rejects the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. MashaAllah, subhanAllah. You have studied, wow. you have studied Arabic grammar and you find over here that when Rasulullah says, وَلَنْ يَتُوبَ اللَّهِ يعني, وَلَنْ يَتُوبَ اللَّهِ لَامْ نُون yes. Particle of negation. Yes, you okay. have la, you mm -hmm. have lam, lam, and over here you have la lam noon. Lam noon. Lam noon, a particle of negation that indicates present and future. future yes. Abadan ila yawm al Allah does not accept the istighfar of a sinner so long as he rejects the wilayah of Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. So from here we understand that one of the conditions of istighfar, in addition to nadam, in addition to being to feel guilty about it, in addition to have feelings of regret, in addition to making a vow that you will not repeat the mistake again, in addition to uttering the word istighfar, you need to have the wilayah of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Shard from the shuroot of istighfar. Is there anybody from the Muslim ummah that says, I do not need to seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. The door to istighfar is Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam. MashaAllah, Ahsan, Shaykh, Ahsan. And on that note, we're going to go to a small break, inshaAllah. And our special guest will be arriving, believe it or not. We have a special guest on today's show. Inshallah, he will be joining us after the break. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. وتغسيلي وتكفيني 
وطينتي وطينتي عجنت من قبل تكويني بحب حيدر كيف النار تكويني هويتك واقبل بامرك ونهواك ونهواك وبودادك كبدي تلتبك ونهواك 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 شلون النار تجويني ونهواك قبل تكويني ازكى البرية وآل محمد الله صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجع أحسنتم I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome our guest all the way from Kuwait سمحت ملا علي مهدي أهلا وسهلا مرحبا أهلا ومرحبا فيكم I hope your travels were safe and شيخنا can you discuss with us the importance of reciting poetry and reciting on events like this Absolutely. You find that uh, the recitations of uh, poetry, number one, poetry was a common means through which historical events were recorded and transmitted from generation to generation. And you have that even on the event of Ghadir, upon the declaration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, you have that Hassan ibn Thabit, for example, was one of the many people who composed poetry in regards to the occurrence of Ghadir. And we have great Muslim poets over time and over the centuries who have come and have described uh, the event of Ghadir in a very eloquent manner where a person is able in his mind through the poetic words of the poet is able to capture the essence of the event in itself. You find that even, for example, uh, the uh, Samahat Sayyid in his uh, recitations, you find that the words that are selected within this poetry, there are meanings that are very deep Indeed. in regards to your Aqidah. How can the fire burn, the fire of Jahannam burn a person who attests to the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib? And you find that these meanings are captured very beautifully, very eloquently in poetry like the one recited by Samahat al-Mullah. Alhamdulillah. Samahat al-Mullah, please if you give us one more hal mumkin, Qasida al-Akh, inshaAllah. InshaAllah, ya Habibi, علي علي يا علي علي حبه جنه قسيم النار وصي المصطفى حقا إمام الإنس والجن علي حب أمان وشرف والجين وبي المحشر قسيم النار والجين أحسن. أحسن. أبو الحملة أبو الحملة إمام الإنيس والجين وصي المصطفى 
وللراب ولي We were discussing before when you were giving the fadail of Amir al-Mu'min You were saying that Shalom repentance will not be accepted without the wala Can we turn that around? Not me saying this <laughs> Rasulullah <laughs> Khatam al-Anbiya sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Can we turn this, this around and say that um, your deeds, your good deeds And maybe your du'a will not be accepted without, uh, of without course. the wala of Amir al-Mu'min The wala of Amir al-Mu'minin is a shart from the shurut li iqbal al-a'mal Yani from apart from all the other fiqhi conditions, legalistic jurisprudential conditions that we have in regards to the acceptability of our a'mal, the wilayah of Amir al-Mu'minin is one of them. And we have hadith in regards to this. In fact, you find that within our salat, within our salat, wajib prayers, which is Amududdin we have, the, the prayers is the founding pillar of the religion. Within the prayers, within the salat, you have attestation towards the wilayah of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. To make it even more concrete, to make it even more clearer, Surah Al-Hamd. Surah Al-Hamd, again, this is something in which there is ittifaq between the Amma and the Khassa. Within your Salat, Surah Al-Hamd, the completion and the recitation of Surah Al-Hamd is a necessary condition for the acceptance of your Salat, for the validity of your Salat. You cannot have a wajib Salat without Surah Al-Hamd. Sahih? You have between the Am and the Khassa who say this. When you come forward and you look into the Khutbah of Rasulullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again referring back to Kitab al Ihtijaj. Ma'ashir al Nas, Ana Suratullah al Mustaqim, Aladi Amarakum bi ittiba'ih, Thumma Aliyun min ba'di. I am that straight path, Siratul Mustaqim, which you have been commanded to follow. And after me, this Siratul Mustaqim is who? Ali ibn Abi Talib, in Salat, in Surah Al-Hamd, which is a wajib surah Indeed. to recite in your Salat. And without Surah Al-Hamd, your Salat is batil inside of that Surah Al-Hamd when you say, Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim. Yani, which Surat Al-Mustaqim? Who is this Surat Al-Mustaqim? Surat Al-Mustaqim, Rasulullah, Tayyib, after Rasulullah, Surat Al-Mustaqim, Amir Al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Meaning that in the wajib salat, a person is saying to Allah, guide me to the sirat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. MashaAllah, Asan Shaykh. And without this, your salat is not valid. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah wa shukar. Back to the mullah. Law sabah. Min fadl. Akhi qasidah. Shukar. Mumkin, inshaAllah. Yigul. أبا حسن لو كان حبك مدخل جهنم كان الفوز عندي جحيمها فكيف يخاف النار فكيف يخاف النار من بات موقنا بأنك مولاه وأنت قسيم وائل براضك يمير النحل من بات من بات وعلى شوقك صميم محشاي من بات يخاف شلون من النار من بات من بات من بات يقين بيك 
شافع للبريء Thank you very much. Shukran. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate the mullah as well on, on this day of Ghadid and his beautiful white teeth. Mashallah, look at those pearls. I don't, don't know if he understands, but mashallah, they're glowing. Mashallah. I to say Mujahid. From what I understand, they came from the airport uh, just a little while back and jet lagged. And Alhamdulillah, this love for Amir al Mu'minin. Alhamdulillah, wa shukran. Shaykh, we're coming to the end of the show now. So, just the final point in terms of Eid al Ghadir. What do we have to do as, as Muslims? Is it just for us to celebrate or do we have a more active role in this you event? You have and this within the khutbah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam, where he himself outlines the responsibility of Eid al Ghadir to all the Muslims. And again, I refer back to this khutbah of Rasulullah. Where he goes on to say, وَقَدْ بَلَّغْتُ مَا أُمِرْتُ بِتَبْلِيغِهِ حُجَّةً عَلَىٰ كُلِّ حَاذِرٍ وَغَائِبٍ I have conveyed what was commanded to me in regards to Amir al-Mu'mineen by my Lord to everybody who is present. وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ أَحَدٍ مِّمَّنْ شَحِدَ أَوْ لَمْ يَشْحَدْ وُلِدَ أَمْ لَمْ يُولَدْ Look at what Rasulullah says here. فَلْيُبَلِّغَ الْحَاذِرُ الْغَائِبَ وَالْوَالِدُ الْوَلَدِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ The responsibility of Eid al-Ghadir upon us is that we convey this message of Ghadir to those who either were not present or who don't know. Ya'ani, those who are not present from generation to generation, this message of Eid al-Ghadir, this message in regards to the wilaya of Amir al muminin has to be passed on and has to be conveyed. We need to invite people towards the wilaya of Amir al muminin those who are ignorant of this, those who have never been given the opportunity in regards to the teachings of Amir al muminin and to preserve this within our families and within our communities we have a command of Allah uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to convey this message and ensure that it reaches from generation to generation ila yawm al qiyamah our slogan is one aliyun waliyullah asan shaykhna thank you very much for today shaykhna and mullah shukran shukran like i can't thank you enough for coming from kuwait and joining us and to all the, all the viewers at home wishing you from imam Hussein tv Mabrook, congratulations on this wonderful occasion and saying farewell. Inshallah, we'll see you on the next episode of the Faith Book. Not saying Ma Salam, saying Ya Ali. <laughs>